everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. We've had a very busy week around here. We did a lot of packing up and shipping of all the art and books that were purchased last week in, at the Terry Moore Live event. That was, was a kick. It was, it was so fun to get to talk to everyone during the weekend and have some interaction, even though it wasn't in person. So, but it, it felt good. I know, so many familiar names. And... I know, we can't thank everybody <laughs> enough for all their support. And I'm keeping Terry to the 100 sketch promise for Terry Moore Live for the first weekend in October. How's that going? It's looking really good. I haven't done the first one. <laughs> but, yeah, we're right on schedule. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Um, well, oh, we do have lots of original pages up on the site, so go take a look at them. It's fun to see the actual page compared to the printed comic. It's totally different looking. Yeah, it is different. It has much more depth and, and personality, I think. Yeah. Yeah, it is a different experience. So if you're just curious about what this stuff looks like uh, on the drawing table, there's a good place to go see it in the store. Yeah, because they're RGB scans. So they're the actual... Like a photograph. Yeah, everything. You can see everything. The blue line and the erasing. You can see all that. Also big news, the 108-page 2021 hardcover sketchbook pre-order. Say that three times. Begins tomorrow at 9 a.m. Central Time. Uh, you guys will have until April 26th to place your order. This hardcover version will have a signed book plate and will only be available from Abstract Studio. Uh, we won't keep them in stock. We won't keep the hard version in stock. So um, Limited if run. you want a hardcover version, you have to pre-order it. Okay. Uh, and it's $25.99. Uh, soft cover versions will be available through Diamond and will be $15.99, and they should be in stores in late June. So the soft cover will be in all the stores. Yes. Hopefully. And on the website. Also, serial number three is on the website in stores now uh, as of Wednesday. It's so real. look for that before it sells out. We are trying our best to keep up with the demand and the numbers continue to rise. So thank you all for picking it up. Yes, thank you. It's definitely a fun read. Look at little Zoe. Oh, she's so little cute. Darling. With her little razor blade on top of the balloon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think so, it's time yeah. to get on the hot seat, baby. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. The first question is from Lotta in Sweden. Hi, Lotta. So, um, the question from Lotta is, how to do the Art Nouveau backdrops. I get how to draw the flowers, flowery hair, women, flowy hair, women, etc. but I cannot for the life of me understand how you get those perfect pillars, circles, etc. that surround and frame the subject. If you want to explain the how-to regarding that, I would be super grateful. Um, sure. <sighs> Don't you have a little tool you use? I do have some tools I use. Um, there is, of course, the circle template for small globes or a sun or a moon in the background. Um, there is also my favorite famous tool. Where are you, buddy? Here you are. I've had this forever. This makes the big circles. So this is, the, you know, my compass is what, what makes the half moons around. The pillars and stuff, of course, are um, lining up on the table with the rulers and the T-square T -square and the triangle. But there comes a point where if you're using these tools too much, it looks too architectural drawing and you want... The whole point of Art Nouveau is to be fluid, organic, like nature. So like, for instance, you wouldn't, even though a tree looks straight, you wouldn't draw a tree with a ruler. So part of Art Nouveau is to know, to get your pencil laid out straight, but then you ink by hand. And that gives you that fluid changing line so that if you have a pillar, some pillars are drawn with the ruler, some pillars are inked by hand over a ruled pencil line. Depends on what your effect is. And then of course the whole point of all of it is that it's overgrown. Uh, so then you work your vines and everything. And that, I know this sounds very simple to say, but it really is a thinking process when you're laying it out. You know, you're, you're trying to lay out a good architectural background, then you ink on top of it having this, uh, uh, I'm gonna go like a, a growing flower or a growing vine up this thing. And, um, and then, you, of course, there's layers and depth 
the point of it is to make it 3D. So there is, there are uh, images up front, images in the middle, and images in the back. Um, and that's part of it as well, to know your characters are usually standing in the middle um, or positioned in the middle. So you have foreground potted plants, flowers, bushes, the bigger things. Then they're in, in the middle with a framing device. And then behind them uh, to show depth is the small stuff. So that's the basic approach. That's, that's Art Nouveau 101. Okay. We'd have to look at So art. you start with your ruler and your circles and draw around that to give it some life. Yeah, you can get it all laid out correctly like this, right? But when it comes time to ink it, just use this. Just use your brush and just... You know, and that go. gives it a little more life. Right, exactly. That's okay. how it comes to life. Lada, I hope that answers your question. I hope it gets you started. Yeah. Okay, are you ready for your next question? I am. <laughs> this question is from Neil Welch. And he asked, any thought of using any of the humor characters shown in Paradise 2 in longer form? Like Kixie, I guess, and who was the polar bear? Yeah, the polar bear. I don't remember his <laughs> yeah. name. I just went blind. He gave me that blank stare. <laughs> I, that, was, that was the 10-yard stare. Yeah. <laughs> Cartoonists have a 10-yard stare. Um, no, I, I, Plato or something like that. Yeah. Um, but I, you know, I think Bick and Beep are uh, characters from yeah, cartooning. Yeah, I think they started from yeah. cartooning. Yeah, they, Bick and Beep actually had uh, a few strips of their own where they would debate. It was male, female in the simplest version possible. Uh, and they would have debates and, and act out. And then I just used them for my UFO people. Um... But I think they sneak in from time to time. But yeah, no big plans unless Robin sees something that catches her eye and says, "You should, you should run with that for a little while." But I do love to cartoon. Um, it's awfully fun, and maybe we need that now more than ever. That's true. Well, um, well, <laughs> that actually that leads us into what you're drawing today, which is taking a cartoony character to a more refined piece. Yes. You know, if you look at any of my books, you'll see the characters go through a range of look. Um, I may draw them as simple as dots for eyes on one page, and then the next page, they're very realistic. Why do I do that? Do I have no control? No. <laughs> maybe <laughs> no, no, that's no. the answer. <laughs> maybe. It, maybe. Uh, did I forget what they look like? There's a, there's a kind of a game plan for it. And I thought maybe we would look at it and uh, I'll show you the ebb and flow of realism in a comic book that I, my style, um, that helps me a lot with storytelling. Sounds good. Okay, well, that's it for me. I'm gonna go plant some flowers in our otherwise brown yard. From the big freeze. From the big freeze. So we're trying to revive it from that and I'm gonna get started today. Good, good luck. Okay. I will be here drawing, so join me here. And I'll see you guys next week. This is Motor Girl, and this is actually the very first drawing of Motor Girl, and I don't actually own that drawing. It's somebody else owns it. It's out in the world somewhere. But I drew it in 2006, and it was just a sketch, uh, a pinup sketch, basically, of... Uh, you know, a girl with a gorilla tattoo and some sort of smoking weapon and carpentry tools and welder gloves and dirty jeans um, and the tank top and the welder's cap. It was all about heat, uh, working somewhere hot with a gorilla. So this sketch, I showed it to my friend, uh, Brian Miller, who uh, colors um, two of my series so far, Strangers in Paradise, Echo and actually Serial, so that's three series that he's coloring um, the covers for. We were talking about this sketch. He said, I like it. He said, you know, if you're touching on everything guys like here, and this is, uh, 
you know, he said, you're touching on everything that people like. Uh, pretty girl, gorillas, if all you need is a motorcycle, and this would, this would be a comic everybody would read. And we kind of laughed about it. But 10 years later, <laughs> 10 years later, I come out with this. Uh, so I, when I first started the book, when I first started con concepting the book, concepting, concepting, conceptualizing, conceiving the book, uh, I was thinking of what Brian and I had talked about. And then I added a UFO. Um, but I was thinking, you know, hot rods and uh, mechanic uh, and ND 500 sort of tattoo. That's not really it, but that's close. And um, the gorilla that hangs out. And maybe the gorilla was got a, a more realistic welding torch. And maybe the gorilla was uh, her boyfriend. He's so alpha, he's an actual gorilla. So that was just kind of how it started. And then um, my writer kicked in. That, this is where the artist is thinking. The artist thinks, I just like these visuals. And then the writer kicks in and thinks, you know, we have a voice, we should tell a story. And we end up with the story that we get about a military veteran with PTSD. So I'm gonna dive into Motor Girl and use this as an example for how we change styles, how I change styles from, how do I get from this cartoony drawing you know, which is really kind of a cross between an American style and a European style and a Japanese style. You blend all that together and you kind of get this where you have these really simple features. Um, the classic uh, nothing nose, just the bottom uh, shadow of the nose. And then I, here's where it is with nothing on top. Then I add the little line on the top to make sure that then at this point, the nose could be uh, straight like that, or it could be straight like that. Um, but I always want to imply that the nose is more of a, has a more of a curve. And by doing those two lines at the top, I get that. It's more of a button nose, you know, and that allows, that's going to look cute when I go into that, uh, the red nose effect that I would do later on in the drawing. So that's what I'm doing there. Uh, this is obviously, uh, you know, uh, just highly rendered, uh, uh, idealized. This is a little more toned down so that you can get a more practical character, but it's still uh, unbelievably cute, gorgeous looking character with the big eyes. And that's a style in itself, the big eyes. Um, they're cute, but it can be limiting. And um, you, as I was doing other sketches, you could see that I started playing with how the eyes would really look. Um, there's another concept sketch that I had. Uh, this is before I ever drew the issue. I'm just, you know, playing with ideas. And, and this one, she's stylized as well. Uh, it's just, you know, um, that looks like an Instagram girl, right? That's not a real person. That's an Instagram uh, version of uh, what a person wishes they look like. So I wanted something more realistic as the, as the writer in me kicked in and started writing this more serious story. I had to change uh, this and get away from this uh, animator, animators person drawing sexy women on the side to a character that would tell a story that would be more uh, relatable. Um, to downplay it as much as possible, we start off with the most unflattering shot possible of any person <laughs> well, with the rear end. And in the, it's actually a, this panel right here sets up the entire series. This is everything you need to know about the series. It's the beginning of the end. Um, and um, there's her end. And we're looking, we, won't, we start the story looking at her end and we're watching her fall apart throughout the series. So it's very prophetic and all that. And um, the first time we actually see, we see that, and then we see what she's capable of, which is dropping an engine out of a vehicle. And now we see her. And it's not that different from the, uh, the pinup art that I did. But if you'll look, you'll see already that 
I've switched to stronger arms um, and uh, the body looks the same, but at least the arms are looking stronger and she's not going for uh, Instagram smile anymore. Now it's a character in character um, doing the thing. So I'm going somewhere with this. I'm not just gonna go through the book. I'm trying to show you how we got from from this to more like this. So you can tell that there's actually already more character in the face. She's capable of a serious face. But then in the next panel, I go back down to the pinup style again, the very simple, you know, old style cartooning. And this this is literally dots for eyes um, because of it, the distance. If I give her more elongated eyes here, it would look more like she's wearing false eyelashes. So in order to keep the eyes looking like they don't have any makeup on, you end up at this distance, it's nothing but just the, the, the pupil of the eye is really what shows. Uh, no big changes on these two pages, but um, you can see that the eyes are getting a lot more expressive um, as, I, as I need them to all the way from, you know, the sleepy look to the worried look to the side look. And I still use the raisin when I need to stare ahead. And this is the beginning of a distant stare, you know, getting deep into thought. And then somebody says something, look to the side, and you can tell that I'm getting more details into my drawings. Um, and as we progress and the story begins to get more serious, the expressions get more serious, and by this time, I've settled into the style of the face that you're usually going to see. Okay, so same woman, uh, Samantha, uh, having her encounter, Samantha, Samantha, Samantha. So obviously, if I am in this moment, this very serious moment, um, I've kind of taken more detail into this basic framework of a character's face and managed to get to there. That's the difference between cover art and telling a story. You need to have this moment where you're filthy dirty, you've been awake for three days, you're soaking soaking wet because it's over 100 degrees, and you're scared to death for yourself and for the other people in the room. And uh, a lot of raw emotion. Um, you never know if this is your last day. So um, there's, a, there's a big difference between expressing that and then expressing that. And that's where the ebb and flow goes. In the beginning of the book, we start with a motor girl who seems cartoony with a gorilla friend. And then it opens up like, um, it, it, the world begins to open up like Wizard of Oz. And the gorilla means something, the UFOs mean something, the aliens mean something, the headaches mean something. And it all ties back to memories. So the memories are the realism and the current time when she's struggling with reality is the cartoon world that she lives in. So I've reversed it, actually. You would normally do it the other way around. Um, but there, that's how I did it. And that's, how I, that's why I used these different looks uh, to get from, to tell the story. I, I used different looks with Samantha to tell, this, to the, tell the story of her struggle with, um, Memories that were all too real and painful and a reality that is falling apart on her. So that's how I did it. That's the story of Motor Girl and how I used a, a different, slightly different design modifications throughout the story to portray the difference between the fantasy and the realism and um, get her story told. I uh, hope this has been helpful, and you guys have fun drawing this week. I'll talk to you next week.